best for a situation, okay, that you're on the field or on a court or something like that. When you're in the training room or in a clinic or something like that, you're always going to be standing so that you can get all of your body weight in the right position and we can get foot in the right position that we need, okay? So, can you pull that up too? Okay. Want me to do this one? Yeah. Because okay. I would cut that off. Because that's my okay. thing. That would get clipped right off. Mm -hmm. So, what we're going to use is our one and a half inch white, standard uh, white athletic tape. We're going to be using pre-wrap. We're going to use a heel and lace pad. Okay, so we made kind of like a little sandwich here with a little skin lube, okay, which is like a thicker version of Vaseline. And we are going to use spray. Okay, are you allergic to spray that you know of? Yeah. Okay. So you always want to make sure you at least ask the um, athlete, all your partners, if they have any allergy, be watching if you guys develop allergies, because some people don't even know it and they are, they've never had to use tape or spray or anything like that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show it to you once. We'll try to talk through it kind of slowly and then we'll put it all together again and then you're going to practice it yourselves. Okay. All right. So let's go step by step. So first I've got her high enough, which is good. I'm going to have her hold the foot. I'm going to give her now for the purposes of the demo. This is a light spray, okay? If it's really hot and humid out, we're gonna need to go probably two sprays and heavier than that. But you always hold the can about 10 to 12 inches away. You just spray on evenly, making sure you've covered all the areas that you need. I tend for the purpose of the demo to go lighter because you guys aren't going out to play. So you're not gonna be moving this around. It's gonna be very tight to get off. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind as you're practicing with each other. But it is better to start practicing with the spray because then everything sticks better and you're not struggling with your tape, okay? All right, so then we're gonna take our heel and lace pads and you see the, the perforated, how it runs off the roll. That's usually the way I lay down my heel and lace pads. So why do you think we call this a heel and lace pad? and one goes on your where the laces are, exactly. So we kind of have to assume the laces are gonna strap up, kind of coming right across this area here. We're gonna protect the heel and where the calcaneus is, that little bump that you always see, the tuberosity back there. Gonna give it a little push here so it sticks down, okay? And then we're gonna take our pre wrap. Okay, so what we're gonna do is with pre-wrap, we're always gonna roll our roll like so, okay? We're not going to do it like this because you're gonna fumble and hit around the foot. So we wanna lay it down like this, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover, yep, you can change your angle if you need it. We're gonna cover the heel and lace pad, okay? We're gonna come around I covered it about 50%. We're gonna to start to come around in a spiral fashion. Covering up to just shy of where you think the musculus uh, tendinous junction is. We're gonna leave a little space there because we want some white tape to land on the skin. If we go too high with our pre-wrap, that means our white tape has to go even higher than that to attach the skin then you're getting into the calf muscle and we still need the calf muscle to fire properly okay so we don't want to interrupt the muscle function but do you see how we just sort of spiraled right up okay we don't have to get fancy and go here and then here and then back down like just go up the more fancy you get the more chance that there is that this is going to start to roll on you okay and then you have to start peeling it apart all right, so next, just rip a fresh piece. Okay, 
Then I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna start to use my body because I really want this to be in dorsiflexion, right? Because typically the ankle sprain is a plantar flexion eversion event and they lack dorsiflexion and can't achieve that on their own. So I wanna stabilize the ankle in dorsiflexion. So I'm gonna come under and I'm gonna teach each of you this hand placement. We're gonna come under, I'm gonna lay it down, I'm gonna grab it and lay it down like that, okay? Two pieces, there's my anchors, okay? I back off, I'm gonna come from medial to lateral because again, the uh, ankle sprain is typically a plantar flexion eversion event, right? So I don't want them to be pulled into inversion. I wanna go the opposite way. So along the malleoli, we're gonna create a stirrup that goes under the heel and back up. And I rip and I give it a little pull to lay it down along the lateral malleoli. Now what happens here with new, new ankle tapers is you guys come underneath and then you angle up into the foot. That is not what we want. We need to stay really vertically along the malleoli under the calcaneus, okay? To wrap up, I give a good tug and I wrap and I get it along the lateral malleoli, never coming into her foot. From there, I'm just gonna do a really quick extra anchor that's 50% below the ones that were already placed just to hold that now so those are not gonna pop off, okay? From here, you guys have seen the ASO braces, right? The ASO ankle brace, have you seen one? They have stirrups and then they have laces. You just did the stirrups. That's why that brace is the brace of choice if you don't know how to tape or when you're weaning out of tape or the athlete doesn't have an opportunity to tape or there's no one there to tape for them, they can use the ASO brace very successfully, okay? All right, from here, we're going to bisect this angle right here. We're gonna start doing our, yeah, if you wanna come around and see where I am on this side, we're going to do our first figure eight. So the figure eight does not start in the foot. The figure eight does not start off of the calcaneus. It kind of splits the area right here. It doesn't come down like this. It's at an angle. This is the hardest part is finding your angles, okay? I'm gonna come up and around and I'm gonna cross right over the talus. That's why my heel and lace pad is there. I'm gonna come under pass it and I'm gonna land exactly where I just started. Okay, there's our figure eight. Hold it up for me. Then from there, we're going to do our heel locks, which is gonna lock in the rest of the ankle, okay? We're gonna do one medially and one laterally directed. Okay, so it really doesn't matter which one you start with because we're gonna do both directions. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna now, I'm gonna still be kind of eyeing that, that junction in the ankle, that talus is gonna be right deep to there. So I'm gonna grab it. I'm gonna hit behind where I put my heel and lace pad there, okay? That tuberosity is gonna need to get the tape. I'm gonna come down, come towards me to the ground, back up around the tibia and I'm gonna land right there, okay? Now I'm gonna do the exact opposite, same everything. I have to hit behind the heel and lace pad, come towards me, so I'm pulling the tape. Back up, I hit around, there we go, and then I land laterally. Now the ankle is totally locked in place, okay? 
I've started back far enough. I'm not in her foot and I'm not on her fifth met. Okay. If you grab the fifth met, you could fracture it and create a Jones fracture, which is not what we want. So you have to stay on this posterior side. Okay. So we never want to capture the fifth met. It should always be kind of poking out at us. Okay. It should not have tape there. Now we're ready to start the closing process, the cleaning up process of the ankle tape. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna bisect the calcaneus again, and I'm gonna pull towards me, and I'm gonna start to layer my C strips or my closer strips about 50% over each other. And now I'm going with the direction of her tibia, because now you see how I kind of came more horizontally here. I was coming more towards the foot. Now I'm gonna come more because I'm just following her anatomy, okay? You see how now I'm a little bit more horizontal? I'm just following what her anatomy is telling me to do. And we're just trying to close it up. Okay, so now we've covered in all of our really supportive pieces. We're gonna do one last figure eight to just lock her in. I don't like that little wrinkle, do you see it? Okay, now we're gonna add closure strips because this is kind of messy, right? So now we're gonna add Wrapping to the bottom, we just sort of lay this down. We don't need that part to be tight because it's really just a closure. Okay, and now we're done. And then they can put shoe and sock on and they're done. Okay, it's not moving anywhere. <laughs> so this is how you can get an athlete to play still with an ankle sprain, okay? If they needed to. It's not really what we would prefer, but if they needed to, you could. Or they could at least try and then let pain be their guide, okay? Or as they're healing from an ankle sprain to protect them, you can do this really solid tape to help them as they're recovering, still play um, and get back into the game, okay? So in order to take these off, you're probably gonna all need to walk in yours a little bit to free it up and loosen it. That's why I say also like be super light with your spray because this is also gonna feel really secure. We're gonna use a shark, okay? So the shark has a blade in it okay so we pop it in there and then usually i instruct the um the athlete to get this sort of fat part right here underneath and remember once they play and move in about 20 minutes this is going to start to loosen a little bit but it still holds all of its proprioception and the locking mechanism, but it'll start to loosen and free up so they can easily slide this in. Right now it's gonna be really difficult, but we're gonna slide it in and then we're gonna let the athlete control this push down around the malleoli and down the foot. And then that will help to just sort of pop it right off. As we're using our sharks, if you feel like the blade has, dull, has dulled, let me know because we have more fresh blades but this, the way it was designed, cannot hurt the athlete, okay? So what we'd prefer not to do is shove scissors down because this is not designed well, that it could cut you. So that's why we have the sharks, okay? So you can instruct them to go down this way. You could probably also instruct them to go down laterally. There's just a little bit more room in here when you get that you can get that shark in there. So I usually tell them down this way and straight across. Okay. So there are other ways to do ankle tapes. Okay. There are basket weaves where they bring the closure strips in. 
There are a lot of ways to do a lot of the tapes I'm gonna show you all semester, but I've chosen to do it the most standard way I can come up with that you, if you got into a training room, you could do it with the other athletic trainers. Okay, so um, Peter, Ryan, Corey. Corey, that Corey might have learned a different way. So um, whoever's partnering with him, if he does have a different way, just try to stay focused on this version, okay? Because if he has learned a certain way, like we're not really gonna change that too, too much, okay?